ChatGBT is a new artificial intelligence model from OpenAI. We're going to test to see how it writes .NET code and whether our jobs as .NET developers are at risk. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash roundthecode to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn .NET, Dependency Injection and Blazor WebAssembly with Round the Code's online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. Okay, so let's give this thing a go. So let's try and get it to write an e-commerce system with orders, products and customers with ASP.NET Core. So build an e-commerce system with orders, customers and products in ASP.NET Core. And I think we'll build it as a web API. So we'll put ASP.NET Core web API and see what happens. Okay, so it's having a think about it. Okay, so yeah, set up the development by installing .NET Core, yep. Create a web API project in Visual Studio. Yeah, defining models as well. There's some suggestions about database, SQL Server, MySQL, NoSQL. Entity framework as well. So far it's telling us the steps, but it hasn't actually written us any code yet. Of course it's going through a high level overview of what we need to do. Okay, so it's given us a high level, so it's told us to... So it's told us to build the development environment, install .NET Core SDK, told us to build the web API project in Visual Studio to find the models, think about databases, MySQL, SQL Server, Entity Framework as well, integrate that, and controllers. And then yeah, testing the API logic as well through test-driven development. Okay, so that's, um, can you write the classes for the models? Now remember here, I'm not actually going to tell it about our previous conversation. I'm hoping it's going to remember it. So let's give it a go. Let's see if it can refer to the models as the models that it suggested in the last response. Ah, right, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's generated this code here and I question the way it's done the orders. So Obviously the ID, customer ID is fine, but it's added a load of lists here, like it's storing all the product IDs within the order, which is a little bit strange. I thought they would create an order item. Quantities as well, why would you, I suppose you'd need a list because it's related to the product IDs, but that, it almost, it almost seems like it needs an order item here. So I'll question some of the code for that. Customer. Again, shipping address, I'm surprised that is just one property as well. But having said that, if I was to put this into a .NET application, I can't see any reason why that wouldn't compile. So it's pretty good there. I mean, I'd also question why we've got public sets as well, when a lot of these would potentially be read-only. But anyways, it's, it's a good start. Let's see if we can get it to split the order products into order items. So split order products into a new class called order items. See, this is already better. So it's created a list of order items and now it's split the order items up into product ID, quantity and price, which is a lot better way of doing it. And then it's just uh, recapping the classes that it already created for us. Yeah, so we can already see here as well. I just wanted to question it as to why it used a list over iList. I just want to see how it responds to that. Yeah, so it's a concrete implementation of iList. 
makes it easier to use and more convenient than an interface. Yeah, quite, it says up here, the element access is faster, which is quite a key thing because it already knows that it's um, a list. And the memory overhead is lower compared to other implementations that use linked list and some other data structure. But it does say about mocking um, implementation of iList, I suppose if you're inheriting um, a list, then iList may be potentially a better way of doing it. But that's a good explanation. So it's created the classes. Um, let's see if it can actually um, create the controllers. And we're going to be specific here for orders, customers, and products. Let's see how it gets on with this. I was just questioning, what was this I unit of work? But I think that's something that's get. Yeah, it looks like it's the service that's getting the data. Because I was like, I've seen that when it was right. That's like, what's this I unit of work? And it's like, ah, yeah, that's where it's getting the data. Like there, it's getting all the orders there. That's getting the particular order by ID. Go ahead and creating an order. So let's have a look at this then. So, yep, it's using uh, de dependency injection there. Bringing in whatever this I unit of work is, we, we've um, come to the conclusion it's something to do. That's something that's um, trying to get the um, data for the um, orders and everything else in there. But getting the orders, that's relatively straightforward. I mean, I would question that that could probably all go on one line. I don't know why you need to create a new instance, but I'm nitpicking there a little bit. It's got the it's got the API controller attribute. The amount of times I've forgotten about that is unbelievable. And yeah, it's got the right HTTP verb as well. So getting the order again. If it's if it can't find the order, just return a not found. Yep, can't see that's uh, can't see anything wrong with that. If we go to create an order, so again. Maybe question why we need two lines there, why the commit can be as part of the add async maybe. And then, yeah, it's returning the uh, particular order. So that looks good. And yeah, so it's using the HTTP post, HTTP put for the update of the order. I would arguably say you could potentially use a patch as well if you're just doing a partial update if you're only changing one bit but no, that's pretty good it's doing a check on the ID as well making sure it's correct making sure it can be found and then yeah it's implementing customer order items um, and then yeah committing the work I mean I'd say we could probably return some sort of response there just to ensure that it has been updated we can actually return a response to whoever's executing that and then delete yep always a relatively simple one again maybe question why we need two methods there but again nitpicking then we've got yeah customer controller getting the customers ah this is where it's gone a little bit wrong though it's sort of stopped halfway through like it's literally, it's got to a point and then it's just given up. Maybe it's due to the um, load that it's under, but uh, can you complete the question? It's like, it's just stopped halfway through. Can you complete the question as you stopped halfway through? Let's see if we can do it this time. Now it gets stuck. It's got stuck again. So maybe I'm asking it a little bit too much when it comes to writing the controllers. That's okay. Let's see if we can get it to write some tests in XUnit.
So yeah, this is going through and testing our controllers. So it's mocking up the unit of work, which we already established is where it's getting the data. And then it's coming up with the orders, making sure that it's returning an OK type. So this is good for testing our controllers. Yeah, OK, so yeah, in this instance, it's returned a new order. It's ensuring that when we call the get order method in that controller, it's returning an OK 200 response. Again, it's got stuck. So it's got part way through. So it's managed to do this test here. So updating the order, returning a bad request when the IDs do not match. And that, that looks like it's worked fine. And it's literally just got stuck here. It seems to have a set limit on how much code it can write. Now, again, it could be down to the load. I mean, it's a Sunday afternoon. There might be a lot of people using it, testing it out. I know it's become very popular. But yeah, it's, um, it's obviously coming very stuck. What I'm going to get it to do now, though, is I'm going to get it to define. Please, can you define the classes? in unit of work. Because so far it's just used it as an implementation. So I want to see how it sort of works it out so we can actually use it properly. Let's see how it gets on. Oh, now it's um, experiencing experiencing an error now. Maybe I'm breaking it a little bit. Let's give it another go. So please, can you define the classes in unit of work? Oh no, I'm, I think I'm breaking it. I think I'm breaking it. Okay, I'm gonna have to wait a bit. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to ease off a bit on it. I'm going to ask what front end technology should I use? No, it's still, uh, still, still too many requests. I just need to give it time to calm down, to slow down, sort itself out. Okay, I keep on trying all these requests, but it seems like there's just too many requests at the moment for it to deal with. What we can do though, is we can use Visual Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Visual Studio project. I'm gonna test out some of the code. Right, we'll select Web API, call it round the code, dot chat GPT. All good. .NET 7, and yeah, we'll leave the rest of that, and we'll go ahead and create it. Okay, so let's go, so it couldn't really complete the orders, but if we go up, I wanted to see, first of all, if this all works. So we just put it all in one file. I know it's bad practice, but it will speed things up a bit. We just put it in classes folder, create a new class, and we will call it classes. I'm just going to copy that all in. So yeah, that's relatively straightforward. I wasn't expecting it to have any major issues. I'm sure if we build it now, it will build absolutely fine. And we can see there, yep, one succeeded, zero failed. We know that it's built. Go ahead and create that order controller that it managed to create for us. Let's go back to the window. Let's go down and find it. Here we go. Now one thing it won't do is compile the iUnit interface. We can see here, oh, bit of a typo there. 
it's not going to compile that, but can we see any other issues with it? Let's bit smaller so you can see it. So yeah, we've got an issue there with the iUnit work. Uh, other than that, seems to be compiling pretty well. Can't see any other potential issues. So yeah, it's certainly a very good guide. Let's see if we can get it to work again. Let's see if it's um, see if the demand has slowed down. No, now there's um, unfortunately there's too much demand at the moment. It's unable to keep up with, with the uh, requests. As impressive as it is, ChatGPT is only really used as a guide at this stage. It needs a .NET developer to question its code quality. Therefore, our jobs as .NET developers aren't at immediate risk. But what about the future? Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.